back to our channel. My name is Casey. And I'm Anthony. And we're Dos Cabasos, and we're going to be continuing on in our Tiger King journey. We're going to be watching episode number five. Yeah. So, I think it's interesting. We just found out that they actually did add um, an eighth episode, so mm -hmm. we will be watching that also. That's kind of cool that they added it after the fact. Yeah, like, I don't really know what that eight episode's going to be about. Uh, obviously, we haven't caught up to episode seven yet, yeah. but, um, you know, it's interesting that they just added a single episode, like, later on, because, Not you know, it was just going to be a limited, yeah, a limited series. series, and then added an extra episode. That's kind of yeah. unique. You never and really I've see that. And I've heard rumors of a second season or something, but I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe it's just rumors, but yeah. maybe they just, like, didn't expect it to do this well um, and be as popular as it is, which it's it's like the talk of everything right <laughs> yeah. now. So. so last time we met Jeff, Jeff Lowe, and I'm curious to see what happened after he got control of the zoo because they did mention like all things went to hell basically because he yeah. like wasn't who he said he was and he like, didn't have the money. I wonder if that cashier's check is going to balance to pay the lawyers. I don't know. Um, I feel like it probably will at this so, point. That's interesting, an interesting dynamic. It's like we were getting into the whole Carol lawsuit, yo Carol lawsuit, which is just like a whole thing. Um, and I like honestly don't, I'm not on anyone's side in yeah. this. Like I don't necessarily like anybody. I don't necessarily dislike anybody either. Like I'm just kind of taking it for what it is and just... After, like, I'm not choosing a side. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing just all the events that have transpired and, like, everyone in this particular show speak, and, like, I'll say the, the main people that they're focusing on here, it is kind of hard to find somebody that you're, you know, yeah. rooting for, I guess. Uh, that being said, the show is about Joe Exotic. Um, well, I would imagine it's called Tiger King. Um, so I want to definitely see how this story now uh, transpires between him and Jeff. Uh, and I want to see what he actually did to take that zoo away from him. Um, obviously, they actually, you know, transferred yeah. the name and whatnot, how he was doing. But what was the he picked motive? the wrong person. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I really want to know that. And you said it was him and Lauren is what they yeah, were talking about. Him so. and his wife. So I want to see if, like, maybe she had some um, some doings or yeah. you know, something that you know shady business. All right. Well, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell so you can stay notified for all of our future videos. And be sure to check out our Patreon where we have full length reactions, exclusive content, as well as bloopers. The link is down in the description down below. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this episode. From the time Jeff came into the picture, the whole dynamic of the park changed. He didn't clean cages. He didn't do book work. He didn't check in customers. He didn't feed cats. Joe handed over the keys to the kingdom to prevent Carol from taking the keys to the kingdom. Jeff Lowe fired half the staff when he walked through the door. Oh, wow. Uh, I've known Joe a span of that about 20 years. <laughs> when do you ever see a dog playing with it? Like... Jeff talked me into giving him $14,000 to open a pizza restaurant. You can sit down on the patio oh, right next to real life tigers. That's better than cub petting, right? I guess. Like restaurant? I, I, don't, I don't know the safety measures that they used. So. They have mm. the best pizza here. <laughs> Maybe most of the meat was from the Walmart truck. Yeah. <gasps> ah! mm. The Walmart truck. That damn Walmart truck. He mailed off this form to the Federal Election Commission last Friday, announcing his intent to run for president as an independent. <laughs> Hello, America. Let's say fuck yes. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen of America. Let's try that. That's like us when we, when we <laughs> yeah. do our openers. There are a great many third party options out there. There's independent writing candidate Joe Exotic, who claims to run the world's largest in. private zoo for tigers. I am gay. I am broke as shit. <laughs> I have a judgment against me from some bitch down there in Florida. And this is all paid for by the committee of Joe Exotic Speaks for America. <laughs> what? We're getting a good look at your national defense program. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh. I was Joe's campaign manager for about a year and a half. Uh, it was it was a, the worst experience of my life. It was horrible. Horrible, horrible. Uh, what's the job? He said campaign manager and I was like, "Holy shit, that's my dream job. I'm going to take it. I don't care what he is." And I already knew he was batshit crazy from our conversations at Walmart. <laughs> I was a manager at Walmart at the time. What? And I worked at the ammo section. What the fuck? Come in and buy this is who he hired to be his campaign manager? I know a lot more than he knew about politics, and that was my main value to him. Primary elections are Exotic next for month. governor. And Joe Exotic for governor, he thought he was going to win. What did people think of Joe running for governor? Lo locally? Yeah. Uh, it, it was a source of entertainment. Joe passed out condoms with his face. <laughs> Political condoms. 
vote for me or you need this because you're screwed. <laughs> he had no idea what a libertarian is. <laughs> he still has no idea what a libertarian is. Yeah, it's I huge. It is huge. Do. Pleasure seeing you. It seems to love him. Yeah, he's very charismatic. Oh, when I first met Joe, things were all right, I guess, and then it turned like the shit quick. Joe would ask him to do something, and Fallon thought it was stupid. And he'd say, fuck you, Joe, I don't work for you, I work for Jeff. So Joe calls me up, Alan does tell me. And I said, well, technically, if he does work for me, he doesn't work for you. I think Joe thought that I put Alan here as a plant to report back to me what was going on. The fucking staff tried to get me killed in a cage. They put cologne on my shoes. What? And this guy was sniffing at his shoes and sniffing at his shoes. Okay, well, first of all, you haven't recognized the rest of us 40 people that are running. She was just fascinated by his shoes that day. It goes on. Ow, son of a bitch. Oh, what the hell are you doing? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. God damn you. <gasps> the gun. Here's all these people filming Joe being dragged around and nobody's going in there to rescue him. Get out! Go! Get! <gasps> the fuck? They're just filming Can't nobody it? nobody help me? Nobody. Get out of here, you bitch! He came out with a story. Somebody put something on my shoes to get that cat to attack me. I'm gonna shoot you right between the fucking eyes, bitch. <laughs> what scent makes a liger attack your shoe? If I were gonna, you know, if somebody wanted to kill you, then they would put like sardine oil all over you, something that the cat wants to eat, not something the cat wants to drool on. Because the perfume, that's all they want to do is sardine oil. I was gonna ask, like, what would the purpose of like cologne even do? Yeah, Joe was very controlling. John Finley went to visit his brother in Texas or anything like that. He didn't, he didn't want him to go. If he went, he wanted him back the same day. I don't know how much love was involved, but I'm sure it was the cars that he bought John Finley, the guns he bought John Finley, the four-wheelers he bought John Finley. They wanted it, they got it. I mean, all they had to do was ask. And I think that's how he kept them close to him. I was gonna say, I haven't John heard John and about Travis are both husband. 19 when they met Joe. And at 19 years old, man, the one thing that, that a 19-year-old guy wants to do is party, have fun, live it up. Travis didn't really work at the zoo. He just rode his four-wheelers and shot his guns at the lake and the river. And... Travis was a pothead from hell. Joe kept him pumped full of weed to keep him from waking up and realizing this isn't a life to live. No, no, no. I had my days of coke. That's I had no, my days no. of drinking. I had my days of meth. And this is my mother-in-law. Run! <laughs> <laughs> this guy is crazy. Super irresponsible gun use. Meth was the main one that we did. It was starting to really fuck me up in the head. I'm still kind of fucked up in the head from it now. Travis would smoke his meth. He would always say that he wanted to, to go to the strip bar with us, but he said Joe would freak out if he ever left the property. I mean, he, he told me with his own mouth that he wasn't gay. I told Joe at least three times, Travis was not gay, okay? Travis was banging every girl in the park. And I find out later, John Finley came out and said, look, I gotta tell you, I'm really not gay. I've been sleeping with the girl at the front desk and uh, we're going off to get married. Also, he left me for a girl. And the hardest part I had dealing with that was, I can't compete with that, you know? Leave me for a man and we're, we're game on, okay? But leave me for a woman, I can't compete with that. Come to find out John Finley got her pregnant, so. The saving grace wow. in that situation was Travis. You know, Joe wasn't alone. Joe still had Travis. Neither Travis nor John Finley were gay. And Joe admitted that to me. I fell in love with straight guys. Because <laughs> there's not too many gay guys in Wendy Wendell. You guys edit this shit. I want you to show it to him. He may be asking me what's wrong, but he only spends five seconds listening, and then he'll walk out on me. Fucking sad. He, he doesn't give a fuck about any of my problems. That's just like so sad. Yeah. Travis came into the office and started complaining to me. Travis was sitting underneath the camera, but it was pointing directly at me. He complained that there was he, that he was a prisoner, that he was never allowed to leave the park. He wasn't allowed to get a job. All this was true, and frankly, he is upset that he didn't have enough pot. <laughs> Sometimes he'd wake you up pointing a gun at you. He'd done that to me. 
on multiple occasions. So he had done that to me again in that office that morning and said, you know, you know, freeze motherfucker, which is just what he did. And I told him, dude, you know not to point guns because I've told him before, don't point a gun at me. And he said, oh man, this is a Ruger. There's no clip in it. You know a Ruger won't fire without a clip. I was sitting in a chair, you know, looking at him when he put the gun to his he head. He seems too sane for all these other people. <gasps> no. He, did he? It's not like on the movies. Was it? I knew he was dead the second that he pulled the trigger, but at the same time I didn't, you know, thought it was a joke. Because, you know, Travis was a jokester. He was a prankster. He liked to play pranks on people. I am just like... Joe's passed out on the front porch, shaking. Uh, the ambulance is there taking care of Joe. Uh, Sheriff's department's got everything shut down. Was it like I an mean, accident? Had to come, I almost had to climb the fence him. to get in the place to, yeah, to find like, out what was going on. Yeah, but like on accident? Goddamn, the best people. I've, I've known him for four years, man. Oh, joy. A joy. Absolute joy of life. Like we had a bond of pain and I couldn't leave him because of course I wanted to leave. You know, why do I want to come back to the office every day that, you know, a horrific accident happened? You know, he, he really loved him. Because I think he said he was like joking with him, like, no, it doesn't have it, the clip in it. I don't know. Uncle Maldonado. Oh, his mom. And we spent the last four years of our life together. And run coming, rub them balls in my face. <laughs> and everybody at work here knows exactly what I'm talking about because you've seen his balls. I don't know how to feel right now about all of this. And like the fact that it was caught on camera, pretty kind of. He has to do a show wherever he goes or whatever he does. I'm mean, just like, he was like singing and. He was even acting there. That's the worst thing ever in my whole life. My son being gone, I don't know how he ended up with Joe. When he found Dylan, he started to bounce back. <laughs> his, his energy was just so strong, you know? And like when he, when he proposed to me, it was one of those things I couldn't think about. I just had to, you know, I'm just gonna go with the flow. It's like my whole life I've just overthank everything. When he proposed, I just, I said yes. Two months after my son died, he married Dylan. Two months. Invited me to the wedding. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a wedding, you know. No, it was the cameraman, me, and the flower girl. So on the social media, well, Travis's mom's fine with it, so everybody else should be. Then uh, I did, didn't hear anything from him again. He was done with me. <laughs> oh, a hat. It didn't, didn't like, like it. it. <laughs> Picture with his hat there. Uh, we fucking lost. <laughs> You do everything against the odds. <laughs> I do, I do. I'm gonna jump off this fucking roof here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. We're worried about that. His governor campaign, I think that's where he kind of lost his path. What was the priority? It wasn't about the animals anymore. Found a microphone and antenna on top of the gift shop roof. Oh, shit. It was about that tall. You know, I could tell it was a listening device. I know, that guy does seem like the only sane one. Mm -hmm. She told me, she says, I hear Joe's under some kind of federal investigation. I said, what did you hear? And she says, I don't know. She says, they were just talking about it here one morning. And that was... I, I got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Like, don't say any more over the phone. I wonder, was it him? So we just interviewed Jeff Lowe, and the entire time, he had incoming calls from a federal agent over and over. He told me that Joe's going down. Joe's, it's over for Joe. Oh my God, I can't believe. I mean, it was sort of funny when we started, but it got really dark. Oh my gosh. So this episode took a really dark turn. Um, it was very sad. Very, very sad. So yeah, when, when Travis had, um, killed himself they didn't really talk about you know if it was you know him messing around was it an accidental or was it like he actually intentionally trying to yeah. kill himself i kind of thought like that he was because you know he mentioned those other things earlier where he's like this is going to be my last cigarette yeah. and he well, just well we don't know how previous like where that footage came yeah. from it could have been like the year before you know like yeah. it could have well it, it seemed like the guy said that he like 
was joking like, oh, there's no clip in it, you know? Yeah. And then... Well, he said that he would say things like that. I don't know if he was yeah. specifically mentioning know. that particular instance. I guess, it, I mean, it's just, regardless, it's sad either way. And it's just crazy that it happened, like, that it even, it's sad yeah. that it even happened. Yeah, um, you know, it was, it's just very tragic. It's harder to watch now because, like, seeing, it just looks like there's, like, a pattern of, like, a, of a spiral of things that just, like, you know, something went out of hand. And then other things just started happening and happening and it just they're like snowballed and just got, got bigger and bigger. Yeah. And what I mean by that is kind of like, you know, he had probably, you know, met these two these two men and we're like, okay, you know, I'm attracted to them. And, you know, he probably had some affection for them, um, but it just didn't seem like, you know, it was shared, obviously. And, you know, he, it, some of the stuff that they were saying, honestly, was just really scary. You know, he was just providing them drugs, not letting them leave the premises and, yeah. and things of that nature. And it's just like, it's really spooky. And like, you know, some of these other people, multiple people said like that, oh no, that they were straight. Obviously the other guy, his first husband left him for the receptionist and got yeah. her pregnant. Um, it's just a crazy story. And it's, it's super sad. And, you know, I, I feel bad for obviously, you know, the, the Travis and, you know, his family and, everyone else but you know seeing him marry somebody else too just a couple months after it was really like i don't know it just made me feel weird inside yeah it was an all-around sad scenario and this just this show just keeps getting like crazier and crazier and it's just like i i people have been saying that oh just wait but yeah. like i would not have expected any of this like it just keeps getting worse and worse so yeah no i know i agree uh, you know i thought I, we we're gonna see more about jeff but you know jeff was just kind of like you know just kind of there they didn't really yeah. he, elaborate like, went to on try like... to do that thing in vegas and it didn't work out and that's all we really heard and then like the stuff about a federal agent so yeah. i guess we're that, they're probably gonna go into that in the next one yeah because i'm i'm really i want to understand is it like because you know in the end of the previous episode they were alluding to the fact that jeff just kind of swept the rug out yeah. from joe but you know from what i'm seeing in this episode it seemed like he kind of you know some of his workers kind of said it too he kind of lost his way a little bit yeah. it wasn't really about the animals anymore um so now i'm kind of i'm curious what jeff did specifically because i want to know you know where his was his actions justified yeah um but, you know, I feel like there's just so much going on back and forth. I definitely want to hear about what this federal call stuff, uh, you know. Yeah, and um, was that the feds that were listening to him? Yeah, because they didn't really they didn't say that. I think it seems like it was, but, I mean, I don't know. We don't know for sure yet, so. All right, guys. Uh, well, if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you can stay notified for all of our future videos. And also, we do have full-length reactions, exclusive content, early releases of videos, things like that over on our Patreon, and the link is down below in the description. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.